Is Auburn going to add another running back for 2023? Freezing temperatures are likely for several hours inland and a few hours closer to the coast. Yes. You are Locked On Auburn, your daily podcast on the Auburn Tigers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Yes, welcome on into Locked On Auburn, your daily Auburn Tigers podcast. I'm your host, Zach Blackerby. Thank you so much for making Locked On Auburn your first listen every single day. Happy War Report Wednesday to all who celebrate as Mike G of the War Report joins us as he does every single week. Mike G, I was looking at Ole Miss's rosters from 2012 mm. to 2016 because it's February, and that's just what you do. That's just what you do. Obviously, those are Fair the enough. years that Hugh Freeze was the head coach. And I was looking at running backs specifically. And no, nobody crazy, right? I think Jarquez Hunter is just as talented, maybe the most talented running back that Hugh Freeze will have gotten to coach. I, I just I don't think we're being biased there. I just think I think that's legitimate. But every year but one, they had five running backs on scholarship. There was one year where they had four, but every other year they had five. And so looking at Auburn's running backs now, I think it will be interesting to see how they handle that position during the May transfer window, Mike G. Because right now going into spring, there's three running backs on scholarship with an asterisk, right? Because you got Damari, Austin, Jarquez Hunter, and you have Brian Batie, the transfer from USF. And then Sean Jackson, who was given a scholarship under the Brian Harson administration. We'll see if he gets to hold on to that or not. I don't know. My guess is no, but I don't know the answer to that, Mike G. And then you get Jeremiah Cobb in the summer once he once he joins the program. Do you think he will try to add another running back through the portal during that May 1 through 14 window just to try to see, like, okay, he, he clearly wants five in most years as he's been a head coach? Well, So this is different, right? This is a little different from a normal transfer situation. Number one, Zach, there's no such thing in my book as a workhorse running back anymore. Okay. You know, anybody who's doing it smart is doing running back by committee, right? So in Auburn scenario, Jarquez Hunter is your guy. Damari Alston is the kid who's up and coming. But behind Jarquez, I think everybody's going to be jockeying for under a new coaching staff for the pecking. I don't think anything's promised behind Jarquez. Uh, okay. I think Jarquez got enough on tape that if you're Hugh Freeze, unless he literally is injured and can't go, it's going to be really hard not to go with Jarquez. He's a great pass catcher. But to your question about whether he goes after another running back, um, I think it's possible. Does he reach for a running back, though? I'm not so sure. Sure. So, so they're going to try to find a guy that they like. Um, the more and more I hear from Hugh Freeze and his staff, um, there's a certain behavior expectation that they want out of their kids. And I'm not saying that they're going to go out and get choir boys, right? But uh, I think that they're evaluating all things in the process. Yeah. And I do, I just don't see them reaching to fill scholarship spots unnecessarily if they can't find a kid that they like. And I don't think they necessarily have to with this current running back room. Uh, I, I'm with you. I, I think they've got the bodies. I think four dudes is enough to go through the season. And they're all young. You should get all these guys back after this season with the exception of Jarquez Hunter and I guess Petit. So, Mm -hmm. you know, is there the argument where like you go ahead and get another guy that can be here a little bit longer? Maybe you get a redshirt freshman or a guy that is a little bit more buried on the depth chart, but they're going to be buried on the depth chart this year too. So I I don't know why they would necessarily choose Auburn and I L I don't know, maybe, but I, I was just a little surprised when I saw that. And it's like, yeah, Auburn's a little, I mean, they're shorter in that position than, than most people are but with the portal like is that a position where you really need to stock up for the future now i mean obviously jeremiah cobb's going to be the guy for a long time i guess for three years and then we all think he's going to go to the league because he's that stinking talented and good and special special player but i am curious to see i mean because we we heard him talk about you know, the 16 offensive linemen. Like, I think he's particular with the certain scholarships that he wants allotted to each position group. Like, I think he's I think he's pretty detailed when it comes to that, Mike G. And most years, he had five running backs on scholarship at Ole Miss, all, all but one. So, I don't know. Uh, I, I can't wait to see how he actually handles that. 
I mean, people were all bonde over Quinshawn Junkins probably coming to this program, you know, even with the running back room that we had uh, when, you know, they thought Lane Kiffin was a possibility. Um, but I'm, I'm with you on this one. I'm not sure this is a position that you need to go stack through the portal. Um, I think Auburn's doing just fine at that position, actually. Uh, and you've got two guys in there. I like Damari Alston a lot. I think that he has a chance to be a decent. I think he's the odd man out. I hope I'm wrong, but I think he's the odd man out in all of this, Mike G. Really? Yeah, I'm not. I'm not there quite yet. Um, we'll see how spring goes. Now, I did say earlier. So, so who who gets the fewest amount of touches in this group? You're obviously not going to say Jarquez. So Brian Batte, Damari Austin, or Jeremiah Cobb. You got time on Cobb. You have time now. They they there were a lot of there were a lot of people who said they think Cobb's going to be a star. They think Cobb's going to be a star, but there's, I'll be interested to see what tactic they take. I mean, there's an old school way of roster management where it was like, don't burn a red shirt if you don't have to for a guy who's not going to significantly contribute. Nah, Cobb's year. an NFL player in three right. years though. But, but T is coming in and they really like that kid from South Florida as well too. Yeah. So I, I just, I don't know. I I think that Cobb, I, my gut says the freshman is going the true freshman is going to be the odd man out. I think that that's most likely, I think it's pretty sensible. Um, but you know, if, if, if Jarquez is having the year that he's had, um, and you know, Damari Alston, I, I like his competitive drive. This is not a bad problem to have, by the way. I, no, I like it's all, not. I like all these kids. So this is a great discussion to have about a roster where you're just literally, you're just thinking, Hey man, this guy is good. And he still might be the odd man out. So not right. a bad, not a bad place to be, which is why I don't think you reach too hard in the portal to take up a scholarship spot that could probably go someplace else where you have a greater need. I'm with you. I'm with you. And they've got more scholarship spots um, filled than uh, than they have guys coming in. So they're going to have to empty a few of those guys and process a few. And if guys will leave, naturally, I think that's just kind of the part of you know where we're at in college football. But I think, I mean, even if Damari Austin gets more touches than Cobb in 2023, Cobb's the starter in 2024. And so it's like, is Austin... Does he ever see a path to where, like, he's the guy in a year? What does that mean, though, these days? Like, listen, do he does he have to be the guy? Like, think think about how Tank was the guy, right? Mm -hmm. Jarquez averaged more yards per carry last season than Tank did, and he got plenty of touches. This is what I'm saying. There's no workhorse running back in college football anymore. It's running back by committee. So if you have some mix of of uh you're of still them. a guy though like you still have a dude yeah i don't think jarquez hunter was complaining by his role last year though right like so does he de- he didn't need he didn't need to be the guy right he just needs to be a guy but don't you think some of that though is he had a path to being the guy he knew this year was going to be his year like he knew that he knew that based on how he performed the year before right and that's what damari Elson has to do this year Right. I think he did some of that last year. He, he kind of got a chance to get in there and do some do some. It's not it's not a big sample size that. But I, I don't know, man. If we're talking about 20. Yeah, you know, th- this is not me being down on Damari. This sure. is me being just super high on everybody else. And I, I actually like Damari's tape more than Betty. I'm a little low on Betty. OK, but they don't they don't they're not bringing him in to not use him, though. You know what I mean? Special teams. Like, listen, he's going to be a special teams guy. Um, sure. I think he adds electricity and excitement to, to that room. And, you know, they'll use them situationally. Listen, I think he gets the second most rushing attempts on the team next year. You think that's fair? But he does. Mm-hmm. You don't think so. Uh, don't you don't know. think Listen, so? Zach, I, I, I declined the answer on the grounds that I might incriminate myself. <laughs> um, but okay. I will tell you this. Um, yeah. It's, this is the week. I've said it a, a, probably a million times on this show. And every Wednesday, they've got a lot to evaluate this spring. They do. This is a monumental task that they have evaluating the, the, all the new bodies in each room. Um, so, you know, with Cobb no and Batie coming in, it does mix some things up. But I, I just believe I'm telling you what my thoughts are, but I wouldn't be surprised to see it go the way you're talking, because I don't think anything is promised behind Jarquez Hunter. I, I'm with you. I'm with you on all of that. It's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. Will Auburn add a new running back? I'm leaning no, but past rosters say it's definitely something to look at when you look at how Hugh Freeze manages rosters moving forward. Read a story from a well-respected recruiting writer that got me so fired up, Mike G. It got me so fired up. I'll read that quote to you in just a moment right here on Locked on Auburn. Today's show brought to you by our friends at FanDuel. This year, the only app that you need at your Super Bowl party It's FanDuel. 
Don't worry about the chicken wings. Don't worry about the fancy buffalo dip. All you need to do is just be making sure the FanDuel app is installed on your smartphone. You can download FanDuel now so you can bet Super Bowl 57 with a no-sweat first bet. You'll get up to $3,000 back in bonus bets. If your first bet doesn't win, there's no reason not to try it. And they let you bet on everything, whether it's all the fun props, whether it's player lines, whether it's the line on the game. If you just want to do, you know, Eagles money line, Chiefs money line, they've got you covered. FanDuel is uh, it's safe, secure, and super easy to use. So join FanDuel today at FanDuel.com slash locked on to claim your no sweat first bet on Super Bowl 57. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on. Make every moment more with FanDuel, the official sportsbook partner of the NFL. Mike G of the War Report, our guest, Keith Niebuhr. I respect very few people in the industry more than Keith Niebuhr. He's incredible. And over, over at AuburnLive.com with On3, he wrote a story about Cameron Coleman, a talented wide receiver from Central Phoenix City, 40 minutes down the road, in Auburn's backyard, but for whatever reason, it just never works out. Auburn just never really gets those guys, Mike G. But he was also one of the 12 players that Auburn commit quarterback Walker White called out at his press conference. After he was committed to Auburn for about five seconds, he's like, okay, I need offensive linemen and guys to throw to. So I'm going to start calling people out. Cameron Coleman was one of them. And Keith writes about what Cameron Coleman's perspective was on all of that. So after that happens, <laughs> apparently Hugh Freeze texts this guy and is, uh, he, here's the quote with, with Keith talking to, to Cameron Coleman. He said, quote, I was like, that's crazy. That was the first time Freeze has texted me. He said, this is Coach Freeze, and I got a quarterback today for your class. He called you out at his press conference. It caught me off guard. I was like, wow. So I just love the fact that Hugh Freeze saw this as a moment just do a killer knockout punch and saying, hey, this quarterback that we got, this pretty dang good that a lot of other elite programs throughout college football wanted, Mike G. And like, he called you out. And so we want you here. And I just, I love the phrasing of, I got a quarterback today for your class. <laughs> I, I just, I love all of it. Um, this raises a question, Zach, about these players recruiting other players, you mm -hmm. know, and whether it's how effective is it? And, you know, a quote unquote, trying to form, you know, in-state super teams with guys who they're familiar with sure. and other guys that they want to play with. So yep. if you're Walker white, smart tactic, you know, if he's watching Coleman's tape and he's thinking, Hey, this guy can catch. And I need catchers when I'm, I need, I need receivers when I'm there. Uh, I, I love this. I love this, uh, the relationship. Um, that these guys are forming even before they get there. And I think it somewhat strengthens, because remember, a lot can happen between now and 2020, signing day 2024. Sure. Right? Uh, or technically it would be 2023, December of this year for that class. Good point. So, um, right. you know, they've got eight months, uh, 10 months, 10 months to hold, on, to hold on to those commitments. And that can be tough. And now, if you, I respect anybody who covers the ongoings of, 17 eight, and 18 year olds brutal yeah i mean it is a tough job keeping up with all the factors that are included in why kids make the decisions they make to go to mm -hmm. the colleges that they're going to also zach you know um coaching changes uh you know things that were promised recruiting other players at their position all kinds of things are happening here but um i think walker white is is a kid that's ex is respected so far from what i hear and what i've seen and him calling out other players might be a um an effective tactic now we put together on twitter if you go to the war report twitter there is a walker white commit wish list listed so if you want to know all the players that he called out it's it's on that that list is there we're going to be tracking his recruiting progress to see if he's going to show up you know on rivals as a top recruiter in the sec this year yeah move over caddy and zach etheridge let's see if walker white can do it because if auburn takes all 12 of those guys that'd be a really solid a really solid class. And one of the guys that he called out, he committed to Bama a few days ago. So it's like, maybe, maybe it's working, yeah. but I just love, I love kind of the one, two punch specifically because it's a guy from central Phoenix city where, I mean, 
that place puts out four and five stars like it's nothing. It's like if you start for Central, you're probably like a either a high three to a five star, right? I mean, it's just they're so good. They're so good year in and year out. And it just seems like Q Freeze, if he's got a few minutes and it's not a dead period, he's driving over to Central Phoenix City because he understands how important that is. No one else has really consistently done that as head coach at Auburn. And I just think a bunch of little things like this can really kind of change the tide exactly of, of what's going on. in Central. Yeah, getting these guys, these receivers out of Central, I mean, this is a, I think it's 7A now, right? When yeah, we, Central 7A. A, yeah, when I was in school, we were 6A. But, right. you know, 7A now, you know, out of the highest class of Alabama fo- 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 high school football, it's super important, and, and the lack of emphasis on a school like that blows my mind. Central has an enrollment of 2,100 students. They put out athletes missing on kids in the past like Justin Ross, you know, and letting him get away to places like Clemson. Come That's on, man. Beautiful. Hugh Freeze has to change this narrative with these hometown kids. It is right up the road, and most of them should be proud to stay home and stay in state because they can't all go to Bama, and I'm telling you <laughs> – it, it, you got to get your fair share of these guys because Bama is. And uh, yeah. if you're going to keep up, you, you know, it starts at home. You're recruiting the state of Alabama and, and Georgia. Right. So right. I love it. Cameron Coleman. Um, yeah. You, you got a spot here. And Marcus Davis is going to do everything he can to recruit you here. The new wide receivers yeah. coach. New wide receivers coach. All right. What is Auburn's weakest position at this current moment? As we put this up. February 8th, 2023, going into spring. What's the weakest position group on the team? We'll both give you our thoughts in just a moment right here on Locked on Auburn. Today's show brought to you by our friends at Alumni Hall. Mike G, you love buying Auburn stuff. I love buying Auburn stuff. I love wearing Auburn stuff. Got this hat from there. Alumni Hall is where it's at. It's where it's at. They've got a spot in Opelika and Auburn up in Huntsville, if you're in uh, North Alabama, or you can just go online, Mike G, alumnihall.com. We've all been sad at some point, and then we just see a bunch of Auburn gear, and we get happy. Thanks, Alumni Hall. Thanks for everything. No, seriously, with, with basketball kind of in the thick of conference play, you want to make sure you're all swagged out wherever you're watching the NCAA tournament. And, of course, baseball right around the corner, too. They've got baseball swag there as well. Alumnihall.com. Or their Opelika location in Tiger Town, their Auburn location off of College Street, and of course their location up in Huntsville. Mike G, I think there's two weakest position groups on Auburn's roster right now. I'm, I'm interested to hear yours. One, two, three, uh, same time. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go offense first. Then there, I, one's on offense, one's on defense. Oh, really? Okay. I think one's the, the quarterback position. I think one's the quarterback position. Obviously, we just mentioned the running backs, how good you feel there. Wide receivers, I think there's a ton of talent. You and I talked about wide receivers either last week or the week before. Like, we feel good about the wide receiver front. Tight ends, I think they are what they are. I think bringing in Fairweather is going to be fine. We'll see what you do with Landon King, if he's more classified as a, as a tight end or a wide receiver. We'll see. I, I think that's going to be okay. I think that's going to be fine. And I think the offensive line, I love all the dudes that they brought in. Even the young guys. Like, if a young guy steps up and gets that, I, I still think you're better than where you were a year ago. Yet. We haven't seen them yet. I know. I know. But it, it can't be worse. Been. It can't be worse. Mike. It could always get worse. No, it can't. <laughs> oh, man. You and I, we live very differently. I got insurance. <laughs> I got insurance for my insurance. Is that because it could always get worse? I understand. I understand. But, no, I, I think on paper it's definitely better. We'll see if it okay. moves forward. The quarterback position, I think he's got a lot of questions, Mike G. And we keep hearing Hugh Freeze talk about these quarterbacks over and over and over again about how they have to grow up. And you know, you watch tape of Robbie and TJ and the little bit that we have of Holden. It's just like there's a lot to be desired. And I know, I know they weren't set up to succeed last year. There's a million reasons why they could have failed last year, and and for and they kind of did in, in most cases. So. That can certainly be better, but I just think that's a position that needs to get better. Mike I, I'm stuck between quarterbacks and the offensive line. It's a close tie for me on offense. Um, the quarterback room lacks a lot of experience. And as a whole, I don't know how you can feel comfortable with that group right. headed into the fall. Now, that's not to say, like, listen, I'm a Holden Garner fan. 
I think this kid can sling the football. And mm-hmm. I think he has a chance to, you know, really showcase that this spring um, with, you know, nobody to really take reps from many reps from him. Right. Um, you know, Robbie uh, showed us what he can do with his. Le- I mean, he's a da- he's a danger. He's a menace with his legs, um, but he needs to improve as well this spring. Um, so with the amount that he has to improve, the leap that he has to make from year one to year two, plus the inexperience of holding in game time situations. I'm with you on the quarterback room. The only reason. I, I even included the offensive line is I like the guys that we brought in as well. It's just, we haven't seen them. It's an inexperience. We just have no clue. And until I see a little bit more from those guys that goes down as a weakness for me. My so over- they're one A and one B. I get it. My overall weakest position group on the team right now. And it's an unproven thing is linebacker. Mm. And I also think it's just overall bodies as well. Um, and I'm going to lump edge slash outside linebacker in there as well, just because I, I think you feel good about the three down lineman spots with Jason or Rogers. We'll see who starts there. Then Marcus Harris and you know the the other guys that they brought in through the portal. Like I, I feel okay about them. It's the linebackers, and like I think Demario Tolan can be really really good. It's just we're kind of basing all that off traits and a small sample size, but I, I think it's going to translate. I think he has a chance to be really, really good. Then Austin Keys, like he's played more, wasn't really put in situations to, to succeed at Ole Miss. I think this scheme will help him a lot more with what Roberts likes to do as far as bringing linebackers close to the line of scrimmage and simulating pressure and blitzes and all that stuff. I think that's great. So I think the linebackers are going to be fine, but just by the definition, and like there's not a ton of them, I'm a little concerned about it. Until you've seen the improvement, you it's got to be a weakness, right? Because it's certainly not that defensive backfield. No. no. I think we're going to be okay no. on the D-line, and they've got talent at the edge uh, that's unproven, but, you know, whatever. I, I just, I'm with you on the linebackers. That has not been a super well-coached group, in my opinion. Um, I don't think that they were lacking for talent, uh, but they weren't very assignment sound, and they were – Choosing the wrong gaps and giving up touchdowns, and if a First running back steps weren't in the right spot, I mean yeah. that, that was kind of Cam Riley's thing. It's like I never felt like he got there quick enough. Like mm-hmm. Owen Papo, he could get there, but like I don't think he was coached to get to the right spot consistently. So like he was beat on angles a lot, and like that dude is so athletic that should have never happened. And I just don't think you'll see as much of that this year. I'm hoping. Right, right, agreed. It, it's going to be. It's so funny to me, um, you know, it, they have so much to evaluate this spring and linebacker Crazy. and and quarterback and O-line are going to be amongst the biggest things that fans are going to be watching to mm-hmm. see the improvements at those areas, Zach. Uh, they've they've got to make huge strides in all three of those position rooms. Huge strides right. year over year. If this is going to be a team that we're talking about springboarding into some kind of challenge for the SEC West in Hugh Freeze's the second year. Mike G, how can people find you here? You love you. All that good stuff. Hey, listen, head on over to YouTube and uh, subscribe to The War Report. Uh, We are The War Report on every social media platform. You can catch us most weekday mornings on the morning drop, talking football as well, too. So check us out. Yep, worth your time. Absolutely. Also, be sure to check out AuburnLive.com. Support Keith Niebuhr and the guys over there. We mentioned their article earlier in the show. You can find all my written work at auburndaily.com, and we will see you tomorrow. This has been Locked on Auburn.